So for this question, I'm actually just giving you a picture of the graph, and I'm saying to you, what is the domain and what is the range? All right? Keep in mind what domain is. Domain is the set of all x values that have y values to go with them. That was one way we defined it. Uh, if you look in your notes, there are others, uh, but they're all equivalent. And the range was the set of y values that we attain, or the set of y values we get back when we sub our inputs, our x values, into our function. So in this case, if you look, you'll notice um, there are, there's a graph here. It's highlighted in blue. I'll trace over it in green. There it is. And there's solid dots at the end. So I'll ask a question. I'll say, hey, is negative 2, is x equals negative 2 in the domain? And the answer is yes, it's in the domain because it has a y value to go with it. Is x equals 0 in the domain? Yes, it is, because it has a y value to go with it. Is x equals 5 in the domain? Let's see, I'm going to look up. I don't see any y values up there, no. I don't see anything down there, no. So 5 is not in the domain. Okay? So what we're looking to do is come up with a quick way to describe all the x values that have y values to go with them. So you can tell that at negative 2 is the first x value that has a y value to go with it, and x equals 3 is the last x value that has a y value to go with it. So our domain would be negative 2 to 3 with a hard bracket on each side, meaning that they're included. Okay? Um, in terms of range, now we look back at the graph and we say, okay, what y values does this graph actually attain? Um, I usually ask myself, what's the lowest y value it gets to? What's the highest y value it gets to? And then see how that's, that's a good way to start. So the lowest y value I see in this graph is 4, and it actually reaches it. So I know that for my range, I can put a bracket with a 4, because there's no y value on the graph lower than 4. And if I look up, I see that it reaches a y value of 6 actually in two places, here and here. But I would still say the highest y value reaches at 6. And then the question is, does it reach every y value in between? And the answer to that is also yes, because if you look at this section of the graph, it corresponds to all the y values in between 5 and 6. So there's your range. Okay? So that's something you should be able to do, is look at a picture of a graph and decide uh, what the domain and range are. All right? So what do you think the range and domain of that function is? Yeah. From the looks of it, it looks like this graph starts at the origin. Let's assume that's the case. And then it, it continues down this way. So our domain here is from 0, right? Hard bracket on the 0 because we're going to include it. And we think that every x value is going to have a y value. This graph continues to go down. And as it goes down, it goes right as well. It continues moving right and down very, very far. And in terms of a range now, you're correct. Just be careful how you write it. When you write it, um, the lower value goes first. And the lowest y value this thing ever reaches, we would say, is negative infinity. That's not really a y value. But we're just saying, hey, wait a minute. This thing starts down at negative infinity, the lowest y values you can imagine. And then it climbs all the way to y equals 0, because it makes it to the origin. And it stops there. 